Let us turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 9, verses 37 to 45. Luke chapter 9, verses 37 to 45. <clears throat> okay, it reads, The next day when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met him. A man in the crowd called out, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only child. A spirit seized him, and he suddenly screams it. It throws him into convulsion, so that he foams at the mouth. He scarcely ever leaves him, and is destroying him. I beg your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. Even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. Amen. So the title of today's message is, O oh, Unbelieving and Perverse Generation. You all know the background of uh, today's passage, right? <clears throat> um, a father... Uh, who has a son with a demon possession, uh, came to see Jesus. Uh, they came, he came to uh, the disciples of Christ and asked the disciples to heal his son. And the disciples tried, and they failed. They were not able to drive out the demons. Right? So he came to, <clears throat> to Jesus, and, and the father was... Uh, talking to Jesus and saying, please, heal my son. Well, your, your disciples couldn't do it. If you can, please heal my son. That's when Jesus says, if you can, what are you talking about? And if you truly believe, nothing is impossible. right? And the father screams and says, I believe, I believe. You know? And Jesus ended up healing the boy. And that's the whole background of, uh, of those story. Um, <clears throat> Jesus, uh, upon hearing that the disciples were not able to drive out the demons, and he says, oh, unbelieving and perverse generations. Why did he say that? He said it because the disciples were able to drive out the demons, but they were not able to because they lacked faith. You know? uh, someone who is not able to do a certain work, if they, if they didn't do it, you know, there's nothing to blame about because they were not able to do it. From the beginning. You know? So if someone who is more than able to do it didn't do it, then we can call that person up and say, why didn't you do it? Come on, you know, do it. And looking at the disciples, Jesus knew they were able to, more than able to drive out the demons, but they were not able to. Why? Because they didn't believe. What didn't they believe? And that's the whole point that you and I need to find out today. You know, When Jesus talks about Oh, unbelieving. I think yes, ESV says faithless. They didn't have, they didn't have any faith. They, weren't, they, they didn't believe. Uh, it's an unbelieving and perverse generation, meaning everybody is not believing it. Everybody, everybody is perverted. The whole, that whole generation is like that. It's not just a disciple. It's not just one or two people, the whole generations. That's why Jesus says, unbelieving and per perverse generations. Everybody's doing it. Everybody is. Um, people lack faith. And faith of what? And faith of Jesus being the Christ. Now let me try to explain that. Then what do we need to believe? First, let's look at Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He says, when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out the demons and to cure diseases. And this is what we need to believe. Jesus Christ had already given them the power and authority to drive out the demons and to, to, hear, to heal and cure all diseases. That's what we need to believe. We have it. It's not that we don't have it. We have it. You know, We all have... You and I have received the authority and power to drive out the demons. But, but the disciples were not able to do it. 
What is Genesis chapter 3 problems? As Christina prayed, you know. Had Adam and Eve were holding on to the covenant, covenant of Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. Genesis chapter 2 and 15, verse 16, it says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And that's what uh, the, the Adam was supposed to do. In verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, and you are to free, you are to free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Had they remembered this, right? Genesis chapter 3 probably would not have taken it. The original sin would never have taken place. Why? Because they, they were holding, if, if, had they holding on to this covenant of Genesis 2, 15 and 16, they, should, they were more than able to, to, to overcome the deception and the power of Satan. When the devil comes, when the Satan uses, by using the serpent to, to try to deceive and allure Adam and Eve, they should have, they should, they, they, they have more than enough power to overcome that. Had they holding on to the covenant. But they didn't have it. They didn't, they didn't hold on, they, they weren't holding on to the covenant correctly. So they fail. What do we need to believe? We need to believe the promise. The promise that God had given to us. When you, as you study and as you work, as you have family, as you guys come to church, as you meet up with your friends, as you do anything, you need to understand the covenant that God had given to you. Do you even know the promise that God had given to you? Without that, you have no choice but to fail. Like, like what happened to Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3. What about Genesis chapter 6? The Nephilim age came. Meaning, the, sum, the someone who had fallen from the heaven is controlling the whole people. The, the minds and hearts of people. That's what Genesis chapter 6 is all about. Instead of holding on to the word of God. Instead of holding on to the covenant. What did they hold on to? They held on to their wicked thoughts. That's why they failed. <laughs> they didn't have the faith. All they needed to do was hold on to the faith. Faith of Genesis chapter 3, 15. The offspring of woman will come and destroy the head of the serpent. They didn't hold on to that. They didn't hold on to it. All you and I need to do is understand correctly of the promise that God had given to us and hold on to it. But people failed to hold on to it. Genesis chapter 11. You know, they failed to hold on to their covenant. Once again, instead of holding on to the plan of God, the things that belong to God, they held on to themselves. Now, for them to build a Babel Tower is not a bad thing. I'm not saying you should never build a Babel Tower. What, what the Bible is trying to teach us is this. As they're building the Tower of Babel, they were building it for themselves. Let's leave our names behind. Not God. People say, our name. If you study for your sake, then it's going to crumble. If, you work it, if you're working it, if you're working hard for your own sake, it's going to crumble. You know? God is not telling you to study. The Bible is not telling you to work hard. It, the Bible is telling us to study hard and work hard. Holding on to the covenants. Studying exists for God. Work Business exists for God. You know. But they're holding on, they're working for themselves. People are studying for themselves. That's why they fail. What the teachings of Genesis chapter 11 is this. Anything you're doing it for yourself, anything that you're doing that has nothing to do with God will crumble. Most definitely crumble. So all you and I need to do is hold on to the covenant. As you study, study for God. Holding on to the covenant. As you work, do it for God. Especially when you come to church, do it for God. You're not coming here for your parents. You're not coming here for other people. For any other reasons, but for God. Right? And that's the reason. That's the covenant that you and I must restore. Another thing that you and I must believe, that, that, that we must believe, 
that Jesus is the Christ. That's why the Bible talks about Genesis, Genesis 3.15, Genesis 6.14, uh, Exodus 3.18, talking about the, the blood sacrifice, right? Genesis chapter 6 is talking about the Ark of, the, the ark of Noah, talking about, talking about Christ. You know, whoever entered, they survived. As long as you and I remain in Christ, we will survive. John chapter 15, all the branches had to do is remain in the tree. It needs to be attached to the tree. Then it is going to bear fruit. Right? As long as you and I remain in Christ. Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. You know, As long as I am in Christ, we're fine. We're in good hands. We're in excellent hands, actually. You know, God is, Christ is going to take care of us. And that's what we need to believe. Isaiah 7, 14. Matthew 16, 16. Jesus, that's why for this particular reason, Jesus asked the question, who do people say that I am? What about you? Who do you say that I am? That's when Peter got up and he said, he confessed and saying, Lord, you are the Christ and the son of the living God. That's all Jesus Christ wanted. All the things that he had done for the same reason that he didn't do, it was for this. For people to understand that Jesus was the Christ. Right? Anything that he did, anything that he didn't do was for the sake of him being the Christ. He wanted, Jesus wanted other people to understand that he was the Christ. So that's what we need to believe. Disciples did not believe it. Of course, they didn't, they didn't pray. You know, um, uh, Jesus drove out the demon. And the later, the disciples came to him, came to Jesus and asked him a question. Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus says, these things cannot happen apart from without, without prayer. Meaning, you guys, you guys didn't pray. Now, so... Before, when, I, when I was giving the message on Mark, Mark chapter 9, of course, I emphasize on prayer. But you gotta, you got to remember this. It is not just prayer. The reason why they were not able to pray is because they didn't have the reason to pray. Without you understanding Jesus being the Christ, I'm telling you, pray, praying, to, praying to God will be very difficult to you. Because you don't have the covenant. You don't really have the reason to pray. We need to have the correct prayer, correct reason, correct reason to pray to God. People had the disciples understood that Jesus was the Christ. They'll be praying like crazy, <laughs> like Jesus. In the morning, in the afternoon, at night, all night long, you know. Whenever he had chance, he would pray. He, he did pray. And the disciples would have done the same thing had they understood that Jesus was the Christ. But they couldn't understand that. Of course, they received all the authority and power to drive out the demons. That was it. They will just go around and spend everything. All the blessings that God had given to you, you'll be going around and spending everything. All the wisdoms and knowledge, all the powers, all the talents that God had given you. All you will, you will be doing is just going around and waste it and spend them all. If... You do not understand Jesus being the Christ. If you do not understand why God had given you that talent. Without understanding the, the, the plan of God, you will be just like the disciples. We will all be just like the disciples. You know, we will be spending you know, until we have no more. <laughs> so they were not able to drive out the demons. And disciples came to Jesus. I dare it. I mean, the, the disciples, you know, I'm sure probably the Peter asked, they said, why, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't I do it? You know, I, I did it yesterday. You know, why couldn't I do it today? Prayer. In other words, they didn't know. They didn't know that Jesus was the Christ. If you and I understand that Jesus is the Christ, I'm telling you, God is, God is going to give you strength to pray. God is going to provide everything. Every second of our lives, He's going to provide abundantly. You know, why? Because there, are, there, are, there aren't that many people to know that Jesus is the Christ. And if you know it, God has to use you. you know? So He has to give you 
blessings and grace abundantly. So understanding Jesus being the Christ, because people did not, the disciples did not believe it, Jesus says, oh, unbelieving and perverse generations, how long should I stay with you? That's what Jesus said, right? And I'm sure Jesus was kind of frustrated. And he says, how long should I stay with you and put up with you? Basically, Jesus, Jesus was saying, I had it with you guys. Get out of here. You know? And he says, bring the boy. And he drives out the demons. And the disciples come back. Disciples come back and he says, Lord, why couldn't we do it? He kindly explains. Because you didn't pray. Because you don't know who I am. I'm telling you, if you continue your, your Christian walk of faith, without understanding that Jesus really is the Christ, you'll be running on empty. And sooner or later, you'll, you'll burn out. You'll burn out. You know? uh, you, we have everything. We received everything. But we'll all spend them all. You know? God is going to, God is determined to refill us but we don't know how, you know. We don't. We don't. We don't. We don't have the, the vessels ready. We don't have the, the oil tank anymore. <laughs> uh, so understanding Jesus being the Christ is so important. Now that's that's why Jesus says, "Oh, unbelieving and perverse generations." And another thing that you and I need to uh, talk about is that what it is that Jesus had believed. Jesus, Jesus truly believed the salvation of God for mankind. Yeah, he himself knew that he was the Christ. Oh, definitely. Definitely. He knew it. You, know. you think just because Jesus knew that he was the Christ and everything will, you know, just cruising, right? No. Jesus got up early in the morning. He prayed every chance he had. He knew that he was the, he was the only way, the truth, and life. But still, he prayed. And if you think you know that you are the Christ, would you be praying? Most of you guys are wrong, right? I, I'm the Christ. I'm the only one. I'm, I'm the one who can save the whole world. Why should I pray? God said me. Here I am. But look at Jesus. He didn't have to pray, but he did pray. He, he understood the importance of prayer. He had to pray. Why? Because he had the physical body. In spirit, he was God. But he had the physical body. He had limitations. So in order, in order for Jesus to overcome his physical limitations, he prayed. He prayed like crazy. You, know? you and I must pray just like Jesus Christ. He believed that he was the Christ. Luke chapter 9 verse 22. You know what Jesus had believed? Chapter 9 verse 22 it says, it says, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. He knew exactly what it is that he had to do. He knew that he had to suffer. He had to, he had to, he had to die and he had to arose from the dead. He knew exactly what it is that he had to do. Do you know what, it, what is it that you need to do? I know the reason why people don't study right? because the covenant is not clear. They don't have the reason to study. And if you have the clear covenant, if you hold on to the correct covenants, uh, you, you will be studying. You know, I'm not talking about getting good grades. You will be studying. You know? And if you have the correct gospel, I'm telling you, you will work hard. And that's exactly what God, God desires from you. But if, without, understanding, without understanding the covenant clearly and correctly, there's no point, you know. It's all about enjoying our lives, doing whatever the thing that we want to do, and not doing the things that we don't want to do. Why? Because we don't have the covenant. There's no purpose within our lives, you know. Looking at the whole world, that's exactly what people are doing, doing the things that they, what they want to do, or not doing the things they don't want to do. If you and I, because we have the covenant, we see exactly the, exactly the things that God wants us to do. Because we see the covenant, we see how the covenant flows. 
Because we hear the word of God. We see how God is leading us with his own word. In order for us to follow it, we got to do our best. Sometimes it moves so fast. Sometimes we lose track of it. So we need to stay healthy. We need to stay strong. You know, always receive God's grace. All this be in prayer. So that we can see the things. So that we can hear things correctly. So that we can experience things, uh, things correctly. And without understanding, understanding the covenant correctly, without understanding what it is that you need to do it, this is impossible. You know, that's why so many people give up. They don't even try. They don't see the need, the necessity to try. Why? Because they have given up their lives. Because people have given up their hope. But you and I, we have the hope of resurrection. We have hope of heaven. The hope that God had restored for us. And that's the hope that you and I need to hold on to. As we get to deepen our understanding in Christ and the covenant, oh, things will happen. Things will take place. Because it is not us. It is not us who are actually making things happen. It is the God himself who's making things happen. When you and I believe that Jesus is the Christ, things are things, things going to happen within our lives. So Jesus calls the uh, boy. He says, bring your son here. Right? And if you look at verse 42, even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in, in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the evil spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. Everything's done. Jesus did what it is that he had to do. Now, when you and I read the, uh, the verses 42 and uh, verse 42, how Jesus calls and casts out the demons and heal the boy. We shouldn't understand it and say, wow, Jesus healed the boy. No, this is the proof of Jesus being the Christ. He just proved himself that he was the Christ. And that's the conclusion. That's the, the whole point, the covenant that you and I must understand as we read verse 42. But so many people, what, what, what they saw when Jesus, Jesus was going around and healing these people is that, wow, look at that, miracle, signs, and wonders. That's all they had seen. That's all they had recognized. When you guys come to church, when you guys read the Bible, hear the word of God, when you pray, when you go out to the field and see how God is working, we must understand that Jesus is the Christ. When you and I see how the word of God is being fulfilled, fulfilled within our lives, that's exactly what you and I need to understand. Jesus is the Christ. Only Jesus. But people without the, people without the spirit, spiritual eyes are open. This is all they see. Wow. And that's, that's exactly how verse 43 is, is describing of these people. Verse 43 it says, And they were all amazed at the greatness of God. They all believed in God. So seeing this miracle, they were all amazed. Wow, God. <laughs> He's it. God is it. He's the man, right? Everybody was so amazed. Wow, wow, look at, look at what God had done it. And that's not what God wanted them to understand. What God wanted people to understand was that, wow, look at him. He is the Christ. They're all amazed. That was it. Verse 43, it's like, if you look at verse 646. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? They were all amazed at the greatness of God. That was it. That was it. They were all amazed. That was it. God wanted people to understand that Jesus was the, was the Christ. Looking at, looking at what's, what's taking place. Looking at the miracles and signs and wonders. God wanted people to understand that Jesus was the Christ. But they all were amazed at the greatness of God. But they failed to understand that Jesus was the Christ. Disciples failed to understand 
that Jesus was the Christ. If you and I fail to understand that Jesus is the Christ, and who's going to save this generation? Right? Who's going to save other people? Who's going to save those people who are demon-possessed? Who's going to save those people who are sick, in, in sickness? Who's going to save, who's going to carry out the will of God in this dying and unbelieving and perverse generations if you and I do not understand the covenant? Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord? People are saying, coming after Jesus and saying, Lord, Lord. But they don't do what Jesus had told them. We come and we listen. We confess that Jesus is the Christ. But do you do what Jesus is saying? Just do you do as Jesus says? Do we carry it out? Or are we, or are we still holding on to the plans? Or are, we, or are we still holding on to our motives? You know? Are we not doing the things that we want to do? Even, even after hearing the, will of, the word of God? Even after we understand, oh, this is, this, is, this is not what God wants, but we still carry it out because we want to do it. We cannot stop. We cannot do things. Why? Because we're holding on to our own desires. Because we don't know who God is. Because we don't hear what it is that God is saying. We don't understand what it is that God wants from us. We don't carry it out. Why? Because... Jesus is not our master. We are. Why do we not carry it on? Because success is our master. Our career is our, uh, is our master. Money is our master. Friends are our master. Family, father and mother, or brother and sister, or children are our masters. Jesus is not our master. Our own desire is our master. So once, once you start having some kind of cravings and that becomes your master and you simply follow that cravings. People are not able to follow God. People are not able to follow God's word. Why? Because he's not the master in our, in our lives. So I, this is a question that we need to ask. Is Jesus our master? If you and I do not understand Jesus being the Christ, he could never be the master of our lives. No matter how many times say how many times we say that Lord, you are our master, He is not our master because you don't know who He is. That's why Jesus said, Oh, unbelieving and perverse generations. Disciples have been following, following Christ. They've seen, him, they've seen who He is, the things that He had done, but still they could not understand. <laughs> Jesus was frustrated. <laughs> oh, unbelieving and perverse generations. How long should I stay with you? How long should I put up with you? you know. Probably if I were Jesus, I would have just ascended into heaven. This is it, man. <laughs> Forget you. <laughs> I was just going up to the heaven. right? <laughs> Jesus was Jesus. He was God. He did what it is that he had to do. People are not, people are not able to do what it is that they have, have to do. Why? Because they don't. They don't have the power. But the funny thing about it is they already have received the power and authority from Jesus. Still, they're not able to do it. You know. So, and as a conclusion, looking at the title, O Unbelieving and Perverse Generation, I think we all know that Jesus is the Christ. But we don't follow him. We don't obey him. We hear the word of God. You know, we say Jesus is the Christ. But don't, we don't take the word into our hearts. We don't receive the word with our hearts. We hear it with our ears. And we forget. You know, we, don't take the, we don't take it to our hearts. We're not holding on to the covenant. Why? Because we, don't, we really don't know who he is. You know, we hear about him. We don't know who he is. The problem comes, we're not quite sure if Jesus can solve that. The Bible has been talking about it. You guys probably 
heard it many times that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is a solution. But because people don't experience that he is the Christ, in the midst of problems and difficulties, instead of believing and trusting him, we worry. And we become the master of, our, our, master of ourselves. And we try to take care of the problems on our own. You know? So we mess things up. You know? All we need to do is just stay and trust him. And he's going to take care of it. But that's the most difficult part. Why is it a difficult part? Because he's not the master. Because you, you are the servant, but you think you are the master. You think you have to take care of it. So you start worrying about it. You start planning things out. You know? So you do it on your own. We need, to give, we, need to, we need to give God enough time to do things. He's going to take care of it. Moses understood correctly and said, Be still and see the salvation of God. Are we able to be still? Are we able to just be still and wait, wait for the, the, the salvation, of, salvation of God to come down? Are we, have we understood that Jesus is the Christ enough so that we can be still and see the work of God taking place within our lives? Is Jesus the Christ? He is not the Christ, maybe because we don't know who he is. Even though we say it, but we don't know it. Maybe he's not the Christ, right? Because we have other masters within our lives. Maybe he's not the Christ because we have ulterior motives. You know? Who is the master? Who is the Christ? We got to understand that Jesus is the Christ and he is our master. Uh, so throughout this, throughout, throughout this week, you know, I want you to really pray and, and really ask questions. Lord, do I recognize Jesus as our Lord and Master in every, in every side of my life? In our studying, working, family, relationship, friends, work, my leisure time. As I, when I, even when I play games, and when I read Bible, read books, watch TV, do I know that Jesus is the master of my life? Playing games, fine. Go ahead and play. Study, read books, do whatever you want to do. But always remember this. Is Christ the master of your life? That's all that matters. If you know that Christ is the master of your life, when Christ says, stop, you will stop. Playing games is not a problem. Jesus is not your master. That's the problem. Doing wrong things and wicked things is not a problem. It's just that because Christ is not the master, when he says stop, you can't stop. That's the problem. When Jesus, when Jesus says, let's go, you're not able to go follow him because we have other motives, because you have other things in your mind. That's the problem. Jesus is not, Jesus not being your master is the problem. Hey, you guys want to, whatever you guys want, you guys want to go play tennis, go ahead, play golf. And I would love to play golf. Play golf and playing games and watching TV, Korean dramas, K-pop, you know, whatever, boxing. Do it. Who's stopping you? But is Christ the master in your life? That has to come first. Right? So as you're enjoying you know, by doing whatever the things that you want to do, when Christ says, Come here, and you, sh you should be able to drop everything and go to Jesus. Have you called me, Master? You don't even respond many times. People don't even respond. You know? You're doing the things that you really want to do. The Lord keeps on calling you. So and so, come here, John, Paul, Peter. They're like, I don't know you. <laughs> Please don't call me, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm not here. Is Jesus the master of your life? 
If not, you'll be hearing what Jesus is telling you, O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation. Uh, throughout this week, let us quickly realize that Jesus is the Christ and he is our master. Right? Whatever the motives that we have, let's get rid of it. Christ should be our only motives. Holding on to the covenant of Christ, let's be victorious throughout this week. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for today. We're living in a unbelieving and perverse generation. There's so many um, evil thoughts and evil things are taking place within our lives. For that reason, Lord, we confess that we need you. Lord, we need your covenant. Unless you become our master, Lord, we are not able to overcome the, all those problems. Thank you for dying and saving our lives. Thank you for calling us as your children, Lord. Every single day, help us to help us never forget that we belong to you, that you are with us, and you are our master. The whole world and the Satan will continuously come and try to deceive us and saying, you need to take care of the problems. Lord, help us to drive out the demons. Help us to uh, cast out all the demons in the name of Jesus Christ, confessing that you our Lord Jesus Christ is the only master within our lives. There's nothing that we, that, there's nothing that we need to do because our, our Lord Master, Jesus Christ, is going to take care of us. Just like the King David had confessed that I, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not be in want. Or help us to truly recognize that you are our master. For that reason, you are going to take care of us, Lord. We thank you for that. Help us always and continuously give thanksgiving unto you and help us to live a victorious life in Christ. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.